Dome Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Well, that lightweight division is where it's popping off in the world of boxing. Lightweight division, well, it should be popping off. Maybe that's how we should say it because we got, you know, uh, about four fighters and we continue calling them, you know, these names like the Fab Four and all that, but they haven't fought with each other yet. You know, the potential for it to be jumping off, right, with Javante Davis, uh, Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, and then you got the other ones that are good already, right, you know, like Lomachenko, right, and um, uh, let's see what Jorge Linares, people like that who people think are already over, not going to be in it no more. Those kind of people like, hold up now. Richard Comney, after losing, might come back. But those top four are the top four right now for different reasons, right? And anyway, but Teofimo Lopez, after beating uh, Lomachenko, is feeling himself, really. He's really feeling himself. Uh, we can't get the fights that we want. Uh, Teofimo Lopez uh, he had uh, his top uh, five from the... Uh, from the uh, lightweight division, right? Of course, he's going to have himself first, and then he had Lomachenko, then he had Ryan Garcia, then uh, Devin Haney, then Tank Davis. Now, to have Devin Haney behind three three fighters that all refused to fight him and had all the reason in the world to do so, and I have to mention it, uh, Teofimo Lopez himself uh, could fight Devin Haney for undisputed in the lightweight division, and he's not doing it, doing everything not to, which we'll get to, and we're talking about Lomachenko was number one pound for pound, uh, was mandated to fight him, didn't do it, asked for an exemption, which now we call the franchise championship. And Ryan Garcia is his mandatory as we speak. And Ryan Garcia talks about everyone except him. So Devin Haney is before them. <laughs> you can't put a dude that all don't want to fight behind them, but he does. And he's, he's going to be doing that. Uh, not only is that, Devin Haney... Uh, Actually, is the fight that Teofimo should be taking. But right now, what we're going to talk about is Teofimo Lopez uh, is going to fight his mandatory in Cambosis. <clears throat> uh, you know, we've been knowing that all the time, but he was acting like it couldn't be, might be somebody else. They wanted to fight in Australia because they had a, you know, they could get some people in the, in the uh, stadium. But we don't know how that's going to go. So now, bottom line is they're having a problem with the, with the, uh, with the uh, negotiations for the fight. Him and his mandatory. Now, the mandatory gets 35%. It's a 65-35 split. So the mandatory is going to get 35%. Uh, but for some reason, it's not going down. From what I've heard is that uh, Teofimo Lopez is having problems with his promoter, Bob Arum. And Bob Arum is not budging. That's what Bob Arum has said. I'm not budging. There's not going to be no more. This is not a big fight in the first place, which he shouldn't have let the cat out the bag. We know that. It's his mandatory, but Cambosis just came off beating Lee Selby, and that's it. This is a mandatory that if... Um, Anybody, including Bob Arum or Teofimo Lopez, wanted to fight Devin Haney for undisputed. It's a bigger fight because of that word I just said, undisputed, right? And he'll make more money fighting Devin Haney, right? He's even asked for to have ten million to fight Devin Devin Haney after getting one point two for fighting Lomachenko in a pandemic. So that's telling you that he's not really wanting to have it. But okay, now here's what the problem is: everything that negotiates is hitting the snag. Combosis ain't having it. Right? And here's the thing. Devin Haney, right, is the reason why Combosis will have massive leverage. Right? I've seen it happen before in uh, Canelo versus Andre when it was undisputed. Right? So Canelo was like, let me go and get Kovalev two weight divisions higher. Right? And Kovalev was just coming off a fight with Anthony Yard. He didn't have no time. And he said, no. Right? They waited. Said, forget the September date for Canelo, and we were going to wait for, for Kovalev. Kovalev got a whole lot of money for that fight, something over $12 million. Right? You have leverage, because Kovalev knew he ain't fighting Andre for Undisputed. Same thing as Cambosis. Cambosis knows he's not fighting Devin Haney for Undisputed, so I'm going to act a fool. Right? That's what's going to really happen. Right? So well, let's see what happens, but they're going to go to purse bid, is what I'm hearing. And if it goes to purse bid, then all the money that Teofilo Lopez say he want to make and all that, it goes out the window because Bob Arum has said he ain't going to be you know, bidding too much. So he's just going to say whatever happens because his point is, I'm going to get some money anyway. So this is going to be very interesting because if it's a 65-35 split, right, um, you know, who's going to know what kind of money the Teal is going to make here and where the fight's going to be, who, you know, a purse bid means whoever bids the most gets it. The promoter from Combosis can win this, right, because Bob Arum is not doing much. This is not a good look for your boy. Teofimo Lopez because 
you could have got way much more money, four or five times more, fighting Devin Haney in a high-profile fight, and then we can start calling the lightweight division what it could be, you know, the division, the Fab Four. But before that happens, it ain't all of that. So let's just see what happens going forward. I think this is funny. You know, it's crazy. The man's is what I'm hearing going on, you know, things like that. But if this goes to a, <laughs> a purse bid, right, for a fight with Combosis, Right, as opposed to Devin Haney over there begging, hey, get me, pick me, right, for way more money, then this makes it very clear that David, Devin Haney is the man in that division. Because I'm going to repeat, Teofimo Lopez should be fighting him for Undisputed. Lomachenko should have fought him when he was his mandatory. It was a part of the tournament that they were supposed to have. Teofimo Lopez versus Comey and your boy Lope, uh, Lomachenko versus Devin Haney. So he reneged on the tournament. Ryan Garcia was having an interim fight with Luke Carroll to fight Devin Haney. Wins it, and he's his mandatory, and he's not trying to fight Devin Haney. And you're supposed to put Devin Haney behind those guys? Shouldn't happen, guys. I'm going to come with the top 10 pound for pound mine with the reasons why, and you'll see how different the by pound for pound looks. But we'll get to that. Let's see what happens with this Teofima Lopez deal. It's starting to get interesting now. Because some people are going to be wanting to count his money. It's like, oh, you didn't take this much to fight Devin Haney, but you're going to take this much. going to be interesting, y'all. Dome Sports Talk Worldwide. And we up out of here, y'all.